Hello everyone, this is Lavender Mama back in the Guild Rock Let's Play world and today we are going to be working on our base build. So I know this is going to be a long one and I most likely am going to be breaking this up into uh, smaller chunks and only showing like portions of each part of the build because I know this is going to be a long process. My uh, inspiration build is really big and grand and so this first building also needs to be big and grand. So this is going to be a bit of a um, departure from what I usually do. We probably will do most of this in some sort of time lapse so that it doesn't um, take quite as long as um, it normally does but let's see what we get into here I probably will do some sort of commentary over it to kind of explain what I'm doing and what my thought process is but I hope you enjoy this and I hope it doesn't end up being too long for you so let's jump into the build and see what we've got going on today all right Okay guys, let's get started on this base build. Now we have a lot of different materials that we've chosen for this. We're going to be using a lot of prismarine, warp stem, the warp foliage, um, cyan wool, cyan concrete powder are all things that we're going to be using in this first portion of the build. Now we blocked out this particular terrace area in the last episode and we are going to be starting with the underside which is going to be a giant quarter circle. Um, I got this circle by using plots um, and just saying how big I wanted the circle to be and we're just going to use our materials to create a bit of a light to dark gradient on the underside here. Alright, so now we're going to be using some of our warp stem and our warp foliage to create a bit of texturing on the underside of this upside down dome that we're creating on this side. We're going to bleed our prismarine down into it and use some warp planks and some cyan wool to create the color transition from lighter to darker. Now we're going to be using some sea lanterns to help with our lighting under here along with some soul lanterns and torches. Um, now as you can kind of see here it sometimes can take a bit to figure out how you want to place things and you might end up pulling something back out, trying it someplace else, and then putting it right back where you first started with it.
Okay, now we're going to work on a little bit of the waterfall that we're going to have coming out of the bottom of the axolotl pool. So now I want this to kind of wind down the cliff face and not just run straight off the front. So that means we're going to have to do a little bit of finagling of Minecraft water, which is always fun. Um, and we're going to have to kind of like dig through the side of this cliff face and create a bit of a path for the water to flow by building up the front face. So we'll just kind of carve this through and kind of step it down gradually so that it kind of flows off the side of the cliff face and not straight down. We do have a couple of caves that will have to be blocked off and some openings in the side of the cliff face that we will kind of just step back and um, fill in with the same materials we're using to create the waterfall um, base. All right, so let's get back to this decorating. As you can see, we're gonna put in some warped fences and some chains with soul lanterns to also help keep this from becoming a spawning area and to just look cool. Um, we're gonna dangle these at different heights to help visually create a little bit of interest and to make it so that they're not quite all the same. We do want the entrance to our little waterfall or where our waterfall is pouring out from the bottom of the pond to be well lit too so that people can see where the water is originating. And once again, sometimes where you originally place something that you thought was great is 
not so great once you start doing other things and you end up going back and tweaking and just doing something a little different so minecraft is one of those things where you can always change your mind and sometimes you'll change it multiple times over the course of one build So here we're just working. Ooh. Oh my goodness. That was a startle. <laughs> um, I'm not certain where he came from considering that I've been sleeping. And now it's time to move on to our actual big build. So let's get started on some of the pillar bases for the exterior of our big build. Now we're going to be using a lot of calcite and white wool, white concrete powder, um, light gray glazed terracotta and prismarine along with some warped uh, trap doors and fences and that kind of thing to create our main belt. Now we're going to be build, building the um, basic shape with the calcite and we'll go back and texture with the other materials once we are satisfied with how things are shaping up. I like to do that it just makes it a little bit easier because you aren't worried about switching between materials you're just building with one material and then coming back and making it pretty with the rest of the things at another time So on the fly here, I just decided to make this building a little bit wider than I originally planned. So we're just going to block out a little extra space for our terrace here. So that we can make this a little bit wider. Now, since we're using glazed terracotta, we have to worry about our pattern direction. 
um, all of them have a certain direction so this is going to be a little futzy to get all the patterns in the direction that I want them facing for the different sides of the building. We're just going to clear a little space here so that we have a little bit more room to work and actually our building is going to mesh into the side of this cliff and poke out above it and kind of be built into the cliff face here so that's part of our plan and if you remember our inspiration picture from the last couple of episodes um, you'll recognize that we're following that kind of idea. And like that, the first pillar on the first floor is done. I think it looks pretty cool. All right, now that we've got the main bulk of the front face of the first floor done, it's time to work on some window detail. Now we're going to be using only prismarine stairs here and we're going to be setting them up in a way that makes them create some depth and interest in this pretty flat wall.
And as always, when you are trying to use stairs in a different manner, it can be a little difficult to get them placed. So I struggle a little bit here, but in the end, it looks pretty cool. So we're going to put in some warp trap doors here and that's going to create a bit of a color change which will make this window ledge look way deeper. Okay, just a few more stairs here and we will have a completed front wall. Okay, we are going to get into a little bit of texturing here. So we're using diorite, polished diorite, concrete powder in white, and some white wool. Now we'll be leaving the concrete powder as powder and not turning it into concrete because it has a little bit of more texture that way. So. We're using the diorite and the polished diorite where there would be a little bit more shadow to kind of create a little bit more depth in the wall. All right, now that our texturing is complete and we've gotten a few decorations in, it's time to get the window in the front of this building. Now we're gonna have glass basically running the full height of the building. So it's quite a bit of glass.
And with our glass in, it's time to get started to work on the roof. Now, roofs are the most difficult thing for me to build, so I am going to have to futz with this a bit. So I'm going to bring you in when I have something that is what I like. Okay, that is exactly what I was looking for in a roof. Now some of the decoration on the top may change, but that is what I was looking for. It only took about three hours to get to this point. And as you can see, I decided that some scaffolding and my elytra were definitely needed during that time. Poor sheep, a uh, little aggression taken out there. And as you can see, the back is not done yet. So we're going to work on a little bit more of this so you can see my thought process on um, the decoration portion of it. We're gonna do a little bit of texturing on the roof with some stripped warp stem to just kind of give it a little bit of difference. Now, because we're the main portion of our roof is made out of prismarine stairs and there's not a lot we can texture to go with that. So, it's just one of those things we have to kind of like run with what we can get that matches in our block palette. Look at that, the base is looking so good. And I like that texture. We've got some trap doors underneath of the tier we were working on there. That's gonna help give us a little color variation. We're going to be using some sea lanterns to light the top of this build because we don't want this to become a mob spawner. And I think it'll look pretty cool from a distance as well.
this scaffolding has come in handy to be able to see things from afar. Look at that. Those look really nice in there. All right, let's get some of the final details on the exterior here. We need some more lanterns. We need some more flowering azalea leaves. Anything that will make this seem like it has a little bit more life. We can't forget the sides of the cliff over here as well, where we blended it in to create this particular platform. We just need a few more leaves here around the front of the building. It's going to hide a little bit of our texturing, but you never know where your decor items will hit. So you might as well texture like you think, and then you know what it looks like. And while getting a few more items for decor, Mr. Lockley stopped by for the third time to scare me while I was building this. After a little conversation, we'll get back to terraforming our waterfall. It needs a little love as well. Some lilac and azalea bushes will help fluff this out and make it look like it is part of the landscape and not just plop down in front of it. And I don't think flowering azalea is gonna go there. Okay, everybody. So, look at that. We have completed, well, mostly completed, the exterior of the main base building. So, in here, we're going to have like our bedroom and some storage. We've got three levels going on here. Um, the interior is not done yet. But you can kind of see the axolotl pond is in here. We've got our waterfall in, which still needs a little bit of greenery. I don't have any shears right now to get some vines to add to this, but I think it looks pretty good. I'm, I'm liking that. We added in a couple of flowering azalea trees back there. We still need a little bit of greenery on the roof, I believe, but that is what our base style is going to be. Oops, it's getting to be night. That is our base style. So, as you can see, we've got in um, quite a large area for the pool, and we did a little work here to make an entry and the stairs up into um, 
the next area we probably will build in. Um, like I said, this is not the way this is going to be, but we do have a floor here for a bedroom. And then we also have an attic. So maybe we turn the attic into something, you know, funky. Um, we still need to take down our scaffolding back there too. Um, but yeah, I am happy with our progress on this so far. Um, really happy. I love the way it turned out. So I hope you enjoyed uh, this. We'll come up here and I'll show you. So the back, we still need to um, get another stair there too, don't we? Um, and some lanterns. But the back has this little area where we kind of have like a almost like a portico um over top of it which i think looks cool so i'm super happy with this it took quite a long time for us to build this so we are going to leave it there for today i hope you enjoyed watching me build this and if you have any questions on anything, put it down in the comments. If you um, want to see me add something or you think I should have done something differently, go ahead and put it in the comments. And I would love it if you could like and subscribe and let me know what you think. All right. Have a great day and we will see you in the next one. Bye.